Aya Aya Cheke, Makunzaqua Wames Wiani, Nila Miami Quia, We Pichah Kionge, E Menu Tiani, Tah Kamwa, Pinjiwa, Tupia, Nehe, Wape Sipana, Ila Picassiani, Miamia Nipwayona Kaninge, Me Kemwiani. Greetings, everyone. My name is Kara Strauss, and I'm a citizen of the Miami tribe of Oklahoma. I am serving as the ACPA 22 Indigenous Advisor and look forward to seeing you all in St. Louis. I want to begin with the land acknowledgement statement that was created for this year's convention. ACPA College Student Educators International acknowledges that the land we are meeting on today is within the historic homelands of the Osage Nation, the Oto Missouri Tribe, the Miami Tribe of Oklahoma, and the Peoria Tribe of Indians of Oklahoma. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory, and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous peoples who have and continue to cultivate relationships to this land on which we gather. By acknowledging the land and in recognition of modern and historical settler colonialism, including that perpetuated by North American Institutes of Higher Education, ACPA actively commits to supporting higher education in decolonizing their practice and scholarship through our mission, values, and the strategic imperative for racial justice and decolonization. This land acknowledgement was intentional about encouraging all ACPA attendees to reflect on the place that we will be gathering and to acknowledge the history of settler colonialism that has shaped St. Louis. We recognize the Osage, Oto Missouri, Peoria, and Miamia peoples in this acknowledgement. All of these groups share a history of settler colonialism including forced removals from their homelands to Indian territory, what we today know as the state of Oklahoma. Although each of these groups was forcibly removed and physically disconnected from the St. Louis area, each of them still maintains relationships with their homelands. These communities share similar experiences, especially when it comes to their history with the United States but I want to make clear that each tribal nation is distinct with their own languages and cultures. Additionally, these are not ethnic or racial groups. Each of them is a sovereign nation with the ability to govern their land and people. Indigenous people's experience with settler colonialism did not end with forced removal. The United States continued to enact forced assimilationist policies, including allotment, boarding schools, and Indian termination. Congress passed the Indian Relocation Act in 1956, which was intended to encourage Native people to leave their communities and move to cities where they would assimilate into the general population. Today, nearly 67% of Native people in the United States live in metropolitan areas. Like many other urban centers in the United States, St. Louis has had Native people from across the United States move there. If you want to understand the full indigenous experience of St. Louis, you must look beyond what most of us were taught in our history classes. This is also not just a part of history, as the ripples of all of these events continue to be felt today. As my community often says, we are a people with a past, not a people from the past. I look forward to welcoming all of you to St. Louis in March. I hope that you will connect with the Indigenous Student Affairs Network and the Native, Aboriginal, and Indigenous Coalition. Additionally, I invite you to connect with our elder in residence, Mr. Galen Gritz. Mr. Gritz is a citizen of Cherokee Nation and a lifelong active resident of St. Louis. 
There will be time on Tuesday, March the 8th from 1045 to 1145 to visit with Mr. Gritz at the convention if you are interested, but feel free to introduce yourself throughout if you see him. See you all soon. Take care and be wise.